breaking news. It's important to uh, know what's going on. Traffic. Very informative. And AccuWeather. It's important to know the weather forecast. Always come first. This is the 550 KTSA Morning News with Trey Ware. Now on FM 1071. And the breaking news of the morning, the national news of the morning. Bear County Sheriff Javier Salazar has opened a criminal probe into Governor Ron DeSantis for the 50 illegal immigrants that were taken out of here and up to Martha's Vineyard. And he's on the Stevens Roofing Newsmaker Hotline with me right now. Sheriff, good morning to you. Hey, good morning, sir. How are you? I'm fine. Uh, what crime has, has the governor of Florida committed? Well, the information that we've got right now preliminarily is that these folks were taken from this county um, by means of deception. In other words, they were promised something that was not delivered once they got to where they were going to Martha's Vineyard, and it amounted to nothing more than a video op, photo op, and then being left stranded. Okay, what, what's uh, what's, that, what's the it, crime? What's the crime in that, Javier? What is the the actual well, crime? State? Can you state the statute and the crime? Well, sure. I mean, if the if the allegations that we're getting preliminarily turn out to be true, you know, it could it could be tantamount to to human trafficking. Oh, 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 uh, oh, 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 hold on just a minute. Hold on just a minute. The people here were living on the streets. They were destitute. They had nothing. Uh, they were given a brochure, shown a brochure about services at Martha's Vineyard. They were given the opportunity and asked, would you like to go there? They all said yes, and they signed a waiver saying yes. They were put in a hotel. Their hair was cut. Their clothes, they got new clothes. They got food. They got fed, taken off the streets. Then they were flown to Florida, and then they were flown to Martha's Vineyard, where they were then handed off to people there who took care of them for 44 hours until they were taken over to Cape Cod, where they now reside, where they've been given cash, clothes, shelter, food, and they're shopping in local stores for their children and Ubering to dinner. It seems to me that Ron DeSantis improved their lives. Uh, when was the last time you got a haircut for them or gave them clothing or food or shelter? Well, clearly you got your mind made up about it, Trey, and you, you certainly paint a pretty picture of, what, of what's been occurring. That's not the information that I have. Uh, right now, I'm tasked with investigating it, and so that's exactly what I'm going to do. If it turns out that these people were not deceived in any way, and they went of their own free will, and, uh-huh. and uh, the pretty picture that you're painting right now is what turns out to be true, uh-huh. then great, no harm, no foul. Well, I'm but actually, if, I'm if, actually uh, stating the facts, and I'm giving you a chance to do the same. So who ta- you said you were tasked with it. Who tasked you to do that? I did. You tasked yourself. I'm taking it upon my, yes, I've, absolutely. I'm taking it upon myself uh-huh. to investigate uh, allegations that, of, of improprieties that occurred in my county. Mm-hmm. Look, I'm not saying that the Florida governor doesn't have the right to do what he wants in his own state. Oh, well, that, uh, that brings not, up another question even, then. That, that well, brings up another question. Hang on, hang on, no, 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 you hang on. That brings you, up another question. Uh, what is your jurisdiction in this case? Uh, my, my county, uh, the 1200 square miles of Bear County that I'm, that I'm charged with protecting and serving. Okay. Let's and talk about so, that for look, just a I'm second. Not, let's talk about well, your county. You, you've cut me off. You've cut me off a couple times now, Trey. Let me, let me say what I'm going to say here. So I have no issue with the Florida governor doing as he wishes in Florida. I have, I don't even have a problem with it. If he chooses to do as he wants to in Harris <laughs> County or Dallas County or Tarrant County. But when you come into my county and the accusations that I'm hearing are mm-hmm. that he's deceiving people to take them out of my county to somewhere else, mm-hmm. I've got a problem with that, and I'm going to investigate it. Well, first of all, first of all, the other side says there was no deception. They were given the opportunity, and they were even asked, and then they were given goodie bags on the airplane. They were asked again, do you want to go? And they said yes. They even signed waivers. But let's, just, let, let's talk about this for just a second, Javier, because we've got a story here, New York Post, October 18th, 2021, 9.08 p.m., Miranda Devine, Jack Morfitt, Kevin Sheehan, Christopher Sadowski, and Bruce Golding. Are you familiar with the story that they wrote October 18th of 2021? No, sir. Biden, Biden secretly flying underage migrants into New York City into the dead of night. We're talking about 2, 3, 4 o'clock in the morning, taking children, which, you know, how can a child say yes, that they're into, yes, I, w- I want to go, taking children, loading them onto airplanes out of here, out of Houston, out of other areas, and flying them into New York City in the dead of night. Did you launch a criminal investigation into Joe Biden? 
nobody t- gave me any allegations to me about that case. I've, I've just this is the first time I'm hearing about that. Really? Yes, sir. You 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 never heard about these flights that have been going on for 14 months at the hands of this administration, flying them into Washington D.C., flying them into New York, and flying them into Florida in the dead of night. You've never heard anything about that. No, all of, I've never heard of any of those writers that you just quoted, Trey, and I'd venture to say you and I probably subscribe to different publications and probably watch different uh, different news outlets. Well, no, so no, now, no, Javier, that's so, been so, widely no, reported. Look, the, the it's issue, been widely reported, issue, Javier. The issue, okay, well, and that's, that's fine. I, that never came to my attention, Trey, but what the issue at hand today is, is I'm going to be investigating whether these people were improperly removed from my county. Mm-hmm. That's it. Um, beyond that, if somebody wants to come forward and give information about something else, I, I'd have to take that into consideration. What exactly but is one, improperly but, removed? But, what exactly is well, improperly removed? What, what, what law would, would prevent somebody, or what law qualifies as an improper removal from your county? What is that law? If they, if they were done under deceptive, uh, by deceptive means, that would be a problem. You see, what, what you said in your press conference, what you said in your press conference was, Javier, that you didn't know if a crime was committed. You didn't know if a statute was broken. It was just plain wrong. Those are your words, not mine. You said that. What kind of law enforcement is that when you open up a criminal investigation but you have no evidence of a crime? Just, just the, the only evidence is you felt that it was wrong what he did. Look, if somebody comes to me and makes a makes a claim that there's a there is a crime being committed, we don't always have to know exactly what crime is being committed. Now, after having looked at it and looking at the crimes and looking at what statute might fit, it it's it looks like it could be be made it could be fit into human trafficking. If, however, we find after an investigation that that nothing improper was done, it was full disclosure and these then people Then Javier, uh, Javier, please, I have to Ray, ask you. you. Ask me, Javier, Ray, please, you I have to me, ask you. I have to ask you. You already did ask me and I'm answering no, your question. No, I have to No, you already question. answered it. You've answered. Let me ask you this. We have the Migrant Center over on San Pedro, Javier. People come in. We've talked with Councilman Bravo and others about what's going on. It's a mess over there. There are people that are in the McDonald's parking lot, the ATB parking lot, and all that. It's a mess. But they are taken from there at the expense of San Antonio right now, betting that FEMA is going to repay them, which they haven't done yet. And they're taken over to the San Antonio International Airport, or they're taken to the Greyhound bus station, and they're distributed all over this country by flight and by bus. How is that not human trafficking? And if anybody does it by deceptive by deception, Trey, then I'm going to have a problem with it. If they're done after full disclosure and these people know full well where they're going, then that's on them. But if it's done by deception, that's where I've got a problem with it. Look, clearly you and I are not going to agree on this topic. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. I, I would venture to say that a lot of your, your listeners are not going to agree with me on this topic. And I can't live my life or do my job based upon is somebody going to have a problem with it. it you know, it, I, I've got to do my job regardless of, of, of what the outcome may be uh, for somebody else or somebody else's opinion. Yeah. Guaranteed, every case that we handle at the sheriff's office, somebody's going to be happy with the outcome. Somebody's not going to be happy with the outcome. Trey. All right, then let me and, and let me I ask you about the situation with Venezuela, Nicaragua, Cuba, and other failing communist regimes emptying their prisons into the U.S. and and those folks are right here in Bear County. Or let me ask you about eleven thousand three hundred and sixty-five unaccompanied children, one hundred four thousand six hundred seventy-nine people from countries outside the Northern Triangle of Mexico uh, showing up here. Sixty-six on the terror watch list been apprehended since uh, the beginning of October of last year. 2,204 pounds of deadly fentanyl seized, 4,969 pounds of cocaine seized, 500 million lethal doses of these drugs that have ended up here. And yet you haven't said a word about any of that. This happens and you're, up, oh. you're jumping up and down about it. Oh, no, sir. We're... Yeah. Um, but in this instance, somebody has uh, made a, car- a, a complaint. We're investigating that complaint. I, I hate like hell that you don't agree with it, Trey, but it is what it is, and I'm going to do my job every single time. All right, one more thing. KSAT is reporting that the victims' families in the Anaqua Springs are calling for the state to remove you from the investigation. The attorney in the case, a, a guy by the name of Joseph Holsher, says that you've inflicted more pain on this family than anyone else other than whoever it was that killed their daughters, and you've gone so far as to attack them and and him personally and they believe that you're intentionally withholding the outcome in the investigation. 
Your thoughts? Uh, well, my thoughts are that the state of Texas is welcome to come take a look at this case. In fact, I've been talking to the Texas Rangers since last week to see if it, they'd be willing to take a look at it, just like the FBI has, just like uh, private investigators hired by the family has. Uh, would love to share the results of, of what we have thus far with anybody. All we've done in this case is to try to find some sort of evidence that, that might lead us to refute the original ruling of, of double murder and suicide. To date, we have not been able to, t- to turn anything over. Uh, but again, if the Rangers or the FBI or any other law enforcement agency wants to come help us out with this case, absolutely. The more the merrier. And, and the Attorney General of Texas, you'd welcome an investigation by him into it as well? Oh, absolutely. Come mm-hmm. on down. Um, wh- one final thing. You had mentioned a couple of seconds ago that you were uh, charged with, uh, you know, reporting or, uh, the, the, you know, this was a human trafficking issue and that it was reported to you that it was a human trafficking issue. Who reported that mm-hmm. issue to you? Who reported that to you? Uh, well, initially I became aware of that, of that claim through an NGO, uh, LULAC, wow. a non-governmental organization. And, you know, we've got to take a look at it, Trey. And I, I get it that you don't agree with the way I'm doing it or, or what my job is. But at the end of the day, uh, you know, I'm charged with protecting everybody in this county. And, you know, come what may, I guarantee you, I, I know for a fact you're not going to agree with me on this or probably a lot of the other things that I do. But I still got a job to do. Okay, Javier, I appreciate you coming on and being on with me this morning to talk about it. Thank you, sir. Stay All right. Safe. Have a good day. Javier Salazar, the sheriff of Bear County, 210-599-5555. I got to tell you about our friends over at Shirts Funeral Home. They know how to take care of your family in a moment of distress, a moment when you lose someone that you love very, very much, and your friends over at Shirts Funeral Home are here for you to help you at any time. In fact, they're there 24 hours a day to answer the telephone. So if you need them right now at 620 in the morning, yep, they'll answer the phone. They'll respond to you. 210-658-9224. Now, they do, of course, funerals right now to help you walk through that process, but they can also talk long-term with you, long-term. If you're going to talk about your your own funeral and ar- make those arrangements and pay for it, then Shirts Funeral Home is more than happy to talk with you about pre-planning and pre-need. That's Shirts Funeral Home, right here to serve families all over our area for you. That's Shirts Funeral Home, 210-658-9224. It's going to be sunny. It's going to be hot all week long with highs in the upper 90s as we get closer to the weekend. Right now, 77 at KTSA. 7 at KTSA.